So let's start to look how we can create a data label total sum. We're going to create a custom plugin for this, but when we click on this, we'll make sure that the total sum will readjust itself until it is none, as you can see here. Or if I click back, it will just match this nicely and recalculate whatever is visible. So let's start to look how to create this data label with the total sum. First of all, make sure you have this boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on here, scroll down and copy this chunk of text and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, we have a Discord channel, so join us. So what we're going to do now is start working on creating the stacked uh, bar chart. So we're going to add up here another item, put a comma, save that, refresh. Now we have two of those. I'm going to say here, this will be cost and that one will be sales. And then because it's one is sales, I'll make sure this is green. So I'm going to take here the fourth color. So we have a clear difference. There we are. And then here we will take the red one, which is the very first color of the array. Save, refresh. There we are. So what we're going to do now is going to stack all of this. I'm going to say here, x scale, comma, stack equals true. And then we have another one here, we say stack equals true, save. And then if I refresh, there we are. So that looks quite nice. So what I want to do here is to put the total sum here. However, it should be reactive enough that if we click on one of these items to, to hide them, it should hide the, the total sum or it will readjust the total sum to whatever would be then the total what is being shown. So let's start to work on that. To do this, I need to create a custom plugin for this. So I'm going to say uh, plugins, and I'm going to say a uh, sum data label. I'm going to grab this. Then I'm going to say here the sum data label plugin block constant sum data label equals the ID of sum data labels. Then would I like to draw this after data sets draw? I'm going to say your chart, args, and plugins. Then what I will do here is an object destructuring. It's a constant, and what we need is probably the CTX. Well, definitely, because we're going to draw on the on the canvas. And the scales, we might need the Y scale. So let's put that in there, and we'll see afterwards. If you don't understand what this is, or what this object destructuring does, please check out my video in the description box, understanding charge as object destructuring. So what I want to do here is I'll just immediately go to get the data sets and to show you how I get them. I'm going to say here, chart.get data sets, uh, data set meta index zero. So if I save that, that will be the first data set. If I open up here, let's move that a bit and let's, there we are. So you can see everything nice and clear. If we go in here, we get all of this data here. And what I really need here is the data of the bar elements, specifically the X and Y coordinates, because I want to put it at the very top. So you can see here, we get all of these values here. That's all very useful for us. However, this is only for the data set index zero. What if we, because we have here two data sets. If I have the other one, I need to say here index one, that will be for the red bar here, the cost, if I'm not mistaken. So now what I need to do is I need to use this. I'm going to use this here. So I'm going to say a constant. I'm going to say here the data set meta zero equals this. So I'm going to grab that. And we can just grab this one as well. Put it in here. And we say here for one. And probably if you want to, if you have multiples or you want to make it dynamic, you can use here for loop to create these constant variables. I'll leave it like this. But then what I want to do is I want to loop through this data. So I'm going to say here, data dot for, uh, and I guess what I want to do is I want to specifically go into the data. So I get the X and Y coordinates. That is the bar elements of this one here, the data. So I'm going to say your data. And then I'm going to say here for each array in the data point. So I say here, we can say here, this will be the data point or the data coordinates I say index and then what I'm going to do here is start to loop through this as well 
So what I want here is a few things. I need to have the x and y coordinates, and I need the y coordinates here will probably indicate the height. Well, probably definitely. And then the x coordinate will calculate how much to the right do I need to go. So what I'm going to do here. A uh, constant, we can create a constant, but I can give you this first. Let's say you the data point, and the data point dot x will give us these bar element coordinates. There we are. So what I'm going to do now is, but I need the y first, uh, because what we need to do here, we need to put the logic of the height. So what I'm going to say here, constant y0 will be equal to, very simple, data set 0, dot data and you say dot um, data dot index of course we need the index dot y and the index is for every data point so what I need as well is the other one and the reason I'm doing this is I need to make sure we calculate how much would be the very value here but if I hide one it should readjust itself correctly so that's very important so in here we have this then i can create now an if statement and we just go to check oh well let me just show you what are the values we have of y zero and maybe we can do here another one y one save refresh all right you get a lot of values here but you can see here these are the comparatives ones uh right now it's identical that's interesting I was not expecting it to be identical, but we're going to test that later on. However, if I click on one, do I get a difference? And I don't see anything here. All right, well, we'll see here. What I do need to do is first do a comparison. I'm going to say here, I want to know the value, or well, maybe let's make the if statement first, because I'm expecting that one will be higher than the other because of the bars here. Uh, why? Oh, of course. The reason why it was identical is because these are incorrect. So let me just show you. Now you should have the differences. There we are. So if I hide one, you'll see one will be higher than the other. And what I need is I don't I need basically the one that is the lowest value because the lower the closer to the zero. However, if it's a negative value, in that case it is hidden. So that's very important to remember. So what I'm going to do, or what it really does here, is I guess it pushes somewhere in the value, I guess, here to the top. So what I'm going to do here is the following. I'm going to create an if statement. I just do a comparison. So if y0 is bigger than, I'm not sure if it's 0. We'll have to see later on, because I think it's 32, and 32 is the top here. Maybe I need to get the value of that, but I'll get it later on. Uh, and this one is equals to zero, bigger than zero. In that case, what do I want? It's either one or the other. And the reason why one or the other is because I might hide one of them. So in that case, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a new constant value, and the value would give us me give me the highest value here. I'm going to say here will be um, I'm going to create it basically a function. I'm going to say here if I'm going to put this on absolute. Well, or let's see first. I'm going to say here uh, math dot min. We can get one or the other value. This uh, and that one. Let's see if I can grab the value of that. And then we say console log value save. What is the value? And let's hide this. Say. Uh, all right, we get here the value. I guess there's a lot of value, so it's hard to see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw a text, and then from there on we can play around with it. So what I'm going to do here, ctx.save, to save all variables above. And then I'm going to say yes, ctx.font, and the font will be, uh, let's make this bold, 12 pixels, sun, serif then i'm going to say ctx dot text align equals center i want to push it to the center and do we need the color of course we need so we say ctx at fill style 
What will be the background color? The background color will be black for now. Then what I want to do here is CTX up fill text to draw the text. And what we need here is basically the text. And then we have here the X and Y coordinates. So we're trying now figuring out what is the X and Y coordinate because it's probably this value here for the Y. We definitely know the Y will be one of the high, it's one or the other, which one would be the lowest or lowest closest to the zero. And then what I want to do here for this one here, we can get here the, uh, the X value. So we can say your data point dot X because that's already given. It will just give us the positioning here. And then here, for now, I'm just going to say here, a number. Save, refresh. There we are. So as you can see here, this works. What happens if I do something? It will get a weird effect here. So because it is connected to this bar, that's why it's pushing it up where it's supposed to be. And thus, what it should, or there's some logic behind it. So what we need to do is making sure that this value works. However, I'm getting the lowest value. But if I click on one of this, you can see here it changes it. It gets the lowest value, but the lowest value right now is this item here. I don't want that, and it's a negative or whatever the value would be. So what I can do here to avoid that negative is maybe get here and say math.abs. So I want to get, if it's a negative, convert it into a positive, and let's see if this will work correctly. So then if I do this, all right, you still get some weird effect here. As you can see here, I'm going to work on this. So what I want to do then is maybe change this. Let's remove this one. I'm going to say here, because this I already had in my notes. I thought maybe we could just simplify it. We're going to create here an if statement from this. So if this is smaller, then I want to say y0 else y1 let's save that all right you can see here then what i will do here is another item i guess we can just say here uh we need to calculate the hidden so we're going to say here I, uh let's see here i guess we can say this we say y zero and then this is why I say zero because if we reassign it, I can, we can probably make this a let value because we're going to reassign a value to it. If y zero is hidden, or let me just show you what I'm doing here. I'm going to grab here the data set meta, save that, refresh. So you can see here if I go down and then we have here a hidden item. So if I click here, and then if I go down on this, you should see here now it is hidden, or let me just say hidden, save, refresh. It's null, now I click on this, it becomes true, and if I click on that, it's false. So if it is true, in that case, if hidden, um, we should just calculate that one as well then, I guess we can say here, hidden, what we're going to do here, if, uh, let's see here, I guess maybe y0 equals hidden. If that is the case, I'm going to assign a high value. Just on purpose, a very high value will be 1000. So it's a positive value because I need the one nearest to the zero. And then for this, I'm just going to do the same thing here. Just forcing it in, but index here, uh, one. So if I do this, and let's see what we have now. All right. You can see here, it will jump now quickly to the matching item because this here understands difference. So uh, let's see, I guess, and this could even be removed, but I'll just leave it for now. And let's start to work on the value. So what I need to do here is get the value here. How do I get that value quickly? So I'm going to say here, I'm going to say here the y dot get pixel for the value. Uh, oh, sorry, not like that. I want to get the value 
for the pixel. And what I'm really doing here is on the Y scale, if I'm here, this should be 36 something or 36. So I'll get here the matching value or 18 plus 18, that is 36, yes. So if I say here 38, you can see here, oh, this is very interesting, it gets a certain value. But what, oh, of course, this is the pixel. So what I want to do now is I want to get the Y pixel and the Y pixel here uh, will be the value. So if we get the value, save, let's see what we get. 36, all right, so if I remove this, it becomes 18. All right, so, the, so this effect is quite interesting, but of course it is quite, uh, it's too much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say here dot two fixed. Let's put in here zero. So just, so we have only one number. If you want a digit, put a point, uh, point one, uh, put a one here. That's one or the other. So we have this here, but what I don't like, and let me just show you, is when I click on this, it goes too much here. All right, that's yes. There was just the effect apparently that when I move over here, it would disappear after. I want to have here some space. So what I'm going to do here is on the Y scale, I'm going to say here grace to add one extra tick line. There we are. So if I click on this, there's always space here. This number 18 needs to be pushed up. So how do we push that up? Well, we're working with the negatives. So we have here the value, which is the Y value. I'm going to deduct a value. Since this is about 12 pixels, I say here, if we go 12 pixels up, we should have a little bit more effect here. And that looks quite yeah, quite interesting, quite amazing. All right, absolutely phenomenal. So we have this now. Uh, let's do a CTX up. Restore, just to undo everything. Can we do something more nicer if we want to get the color or you want to have something around it? Well, that's probably not a video. However, this looks quite nice. If you want to assign the color here, I'm going to show you just one last item. We're going down here. We're going to make, after the scales, I'm going to say plugins. And then in this plugins, don't, don't get mistaken by this here. This is inside the options. Then I'm going to say here the sum data label. And then in here, in this object, we can say here color. And we're going to make this gray. So you have this option here to control without controlling or touching the plugin. So what I'm going to do here is the following. Uh, the black here will be removed into whatever we assign in here, the gray, or else we give it a default color. So what I'm going to do here, default will be black if we did not assign anything or else, or that's the else. So that's the default option. So how do we get that item there? Well, we have this plugins and this plugins understand this ID and the ID is the object basically we're referring to. So basically the ID would be this. So that one needs to be identical and then we're going to get here the color. If I put that in there and then we refresh, there we are. If I make this green, just to confirm, save, refresh, there we are. If I say I don't have anything, do we get a black color? There we are. And now we have this nicely connected and that's it.